Greeks, they talk about the muse. My muse has been on break for 51 years. He's never seemed to be where I need him. So I had to learn to be creative on the moment. And when brainstorming, you get a group of people, or you do it on your own. You, you look for quantity before you look for quality. You generate as many ideas, not solutions, ideas that can be lead to possible solutions. Then you try to be free wheeling, free wheeling, because it's been proven over and over again through research. It's easier to take a wild idea and tame it down than to take a tame idea and make it exciting. Think of some of the dull things you've had to deal with in your life. How do you make those exciting compared to some of those exciting things and tame them down? You can tame a tiger much easier than you can take a house cat and turn it into a vicious tiger. Is another way to analyze that. And probably other things then. Hitchhikes, combine ideas, look for other ideas. The iPad was not an original idea. It's a combination of a lot of other ideas, many of them that have been failures including Apple's failures with their first attempt. Same with the light bulb, same with the automobile, same with the airplane, same with almost everything human beings have ever created. There have been far more failures than there have been successes. But inventors think in mass. They don't think of single answers like school tries to teach. Focus on learning those single answers your teachers want. That will help you get ready. Think about the process that's needed to do it. And now I'll tell you the story about my son. His, his mother and I had separated in steps of process of divorce. He was nine at the time, his younger brother Scott was six. And I was picking him up for the weekend, the usual weekend dad type thing. And by that time I had been teaching the kids or working with the students from kindergarten through the fifth grade for about four months. And I was trying to learn how to be a teacher, because I was an architect, a designer, a writer, a cartoonist. I wasn't a teacher. But there was something about working with these young children that excited me. It was fun. Even though I spent 40 or 50 hours preparing for the few hours I was with them, and then had to work 40 or 50 hours to pay my bills, it was far more fun than even working as an architect, which was fun. One of the reasons I changed. But I picked him up one weekend and we were driving and I said, we have to go to Florida Atlantic University, kind of like going to Utah, which was a few miles from our home, their home and also where I was living separately at the time. So on our way down there, I said, well, what was school like this week? What did you do? What did you learn? What's something that was fun? What did you hate? I'd do anything to get them to talk. I said, well, just like you, not respond. No matter what I did. But they got gotten pretty open by that time. I'm just the cool dad, not the angry mother. You know, it's easy to be the parent who's not there all the time. You learn that, unfortunately. Some of you may learn that later. Anyways, Jeff says, Oh, I learned this thing called the Dewey Decimal System. Well, tell me about it. Well, the librarian, actually, in his case, media center specialist said it's the way books are cataloged. You know, you have numbers and letters and they fit in certain ranges and this is what you have for science, this is what for math, this is what for arts, and so forth. Well, that was pretty interesting. And I said, the library, we're about to 